In this presentation, I'll be showing you an introduction on using Capture and PSPICE in ORCAT 10.5 by constructing a simple voltage divider circuit and briefly going over simulations and plotting options. We'll begin by launching Capture from the desktop by selecting Start, Programs, ORCAT 10.5, and Capture. From the top menu, select File, New, and Project. The new project dialog box appears, giving you four options for starting your project. The analog or mixed AD choice allows you to start a blank project or edit an existing template for simulation, and is the most general design selection. If you will be working with PSPICE, then you'll always go with this option. The PC board wizard is used for system level designs. The programmable logic wizard gets you started designing CPLD or FPGA devices, and the schematic option lets you quickly start a blank schematic project. Since we need to construct and simulate our design, we'll need to use PSPICE. Therefore, we choose the analog or mixed AD option. You're also provided with the file directory text box that allows you to specify the location for your work. By default, your project will be saved in the PSPICE folder located in your tools directory. If necessary, click the browse button to select a different path. I'll name my project Volt DIV and click OK. The Create PSPICE project dialog box appears. You're given the option of starting a blank project or working off of an existing one. I'll select blank project and hit OK. This brings up my blank schematic and design environment along with the project manager on the left hand side. The project manager has two views. A hierarchy view which shows a block diagram mode of your project and a file view which separates your project into design resources containing your schematics and library files, outputs for your simulation results, and piece by its resources which contain project specific files such as attachments, model libraries, simulation profiles, and stimulus files. The right hand side of the design environment shows the tool palette containing the most commonly used commands for quick access. You can move the palette anywhere for your convenience. To construct our voltage divider, we will access our parts database by going either to the place part on the piece by its menu or by selecting the place part icon on the toolbar. The Place Part dialog box appears. By default, Design Cache is loaded. This default library stores all the parts from your project using cache memory for quick access or transferability. Since we started a blank project, our Design Cache is empty, so we will have to add libraries to obtain the proper parts for our divider. To add our parts, I'll select Add Library. A browse window opens displaying the piece by its libraries. I'll select the analog library since it provides basic components such as resistors, capacitors, and diodes. While pressing the control button on my keyboard, I'll go ahead and select the source library as well, so I can choose my voltage source. Now that I have my library selected, I'll go ahead and click OK to load into my parts listing. I can either scroll down and select my resistor, or do a search by typing R in the part text box. Notice that a picture appears on the lower right hand corner of the screen, along with the piece bias and layout icons on the bottom left. These ensure proper part selection and compatibility with either PSPICE or CAPTURE. By placing my mouse pointer over the icon, it lets me know that this particular part is PSPICE compatible. I'll hit OK, which will allow me to place the part anywhere on my schematic. Once I'm satisfied with my placement, I simply left-click on my mouse, which drops a part, and automatically allows me to place another resistor. I would like to rotate this one vertically. To accomplish this, I can either hit R on my keyboard to rotate it, or I can right-click on my mouse, bringing up a menu allowing me to select the rotate option. When I'm finished placing, I can right click and select end mode or hit the escape key to stop placing parts. Now, a common mistake when working either on a blank or schematic project is incorporating the wrong library files in the design. A piece by its project such as this one will only simulate if all the parts come from piece by its library files. Including parts from capture library files will not allow you to run simulations since capture parts are used only for layout and design. To access piece by its parts, simply go to tools, piece by its, and libraries for the proper part libraries. Next, I'll select the sinusoidal source. To do this, I can go and place my part as I did previously, or if you've become familiar with the part names, you can do a quick search by using the center text box, but make sure your libraries are still included. The source I want is called vSign, located in the vSource library. Now, the vSource library has already been loaded, so I'll type the part in and hit enter to bring it up. Lastly, we'll place a ground denoted by GND. 
An important thing to note about the ground part is that during simulation you will receive netlist errors unless you include a zero ground. This occurs because a circuit ground must always be assigned a node name of zero. To do this, select your zero ground from the toolbar. Now I'll go ahead and change the values of my resistors to 3.3K by double clicking on the parts. Having done that, I'll set up my voltage source. Here I'll have it running at an operating frequency of 1 kHz with 0 offset and a 5 volt amplitude. Now that I have all my values, I'll go and connect my divider by going to the place wire icon on my toolbar. Once selected, you can left click on your schematic to begin placing your wire. Red highlights indicate where you will make a connection once you left click again. If you'd like to stop placing wires, simply finish a connection at a node or a field, right click and go to end wire, or just hit the escape key. Once you've finished and have saved your work, you can simulate your circuit by going to PSPICE from the capture menu and then new simulation profile. Assign a name for your simulation run. I'll choose divider out. The simulation settings dialog box appears with the analysis tab selected by default. In the analysis type pull down menu I'll keep time domain selected, leave the general settings and change my run time to one millisecond which will correspond to the period of my operating frequency of one kilohertz. Finally, I'll choose a maximum step size of 10 microseconds in my transient options to get a detailed output plot of my sinusoid. Satisfied with my settings, I'll hit OK. Now I'll place two voltage probes at the input and output voltages for simulation. To do this, I'll select the voltage level marker icon from the top menu. You can place the probes on either the nets or pins. I'll save my work one last time and select the run piece by icon from the top toolbar to simulate and view my waveforms. Now while you're in the waveform screen, to change simulation settings, select the edit simulation settings on the left toolbar. Adding traces to your outputs is another interesting feature if you'd like to view the effects of placing different functions on your data. Simply click on the Add Trace icon from the top toolbar, which will bring up the trace window. From the left, select any circuit points that you would want to analyze and add functions from the right. The progress of your functions will be displayed on the Trace Expression text field, where you can further edit if necessary. For example, I'll take the square root across just to R1 and hit OK to display it. This ends a short introduction on how to construct and simulate a circuit using Capture and PSPICE in ORCAD 10.5. We went over the basics of building a piece by circuit for simulation by choosing the proper part libraries and tools, as well as going over simulation settings and output plot functions for the circuit, such as a square root function. Thank you for your time.